I would not watch this if you've got a medical exam coming up. This is the hand that rocks the cradle. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. This is the Bartell family. Claire, her husband Michael and their daughter Emma. They're the perfect family and Michael certainly never cheats on Claire. But never. Well, hardly ever. Oh my God, who is that? <laughs> it's okay, it's Solomon from the Better Day Society, here to paint the fence. The Better Day Society helps place the mentally disabled. Yeah, I don't care. All you need to know is that Solomon has severe learning difficulties. <laughs> Claire is pregnant and has an appointment with a gynecologist today. Hi, I'm Dr. Mott. Hi. Dr. Mott's wife is also expecting a baby. I can't show much of the exam, but let's just say Dr. Mott's behavior is extremely inappropriate. Oh, Dr. Ew. Is this some kind of sick joke? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Although we don't see Dr. Mott knocking one out under his lap coat, it's certainly implied. Was that too much? Let me know in the comments. Thanks. After he's finished, Claire leaves in such a panic, she needs her inhaler. When she gets home, she tells Michael about what's happened. If we don't report this, he's gonna do the same thing to somebody else. So they do report it, and four other women come forward saying Dr. Mott has done the same thing to them. He's a creep. So Dr. Mock kills himself. His pregnant widow finds out that because her late husband's estate will likely be sued, his assets are frozen and she'll be left with nothing. So she collapses and loses the baby. <laughs> While recovering in hospital, she sees a news report about her husband's suicide, which includes details about Claire and the complaint she made against him. Is this the sort of thing that gets widely reported when someone makes a complaint like that? I don't think so. Anyway, back at the Bartels, the baby's been born, everyone's happy, and Solomon is now part of the family. But they've decided they need a nanny, so that Claire has time to build her own greenhouse. Okay. And look who's turned up to apply for the position. <laughs> She's calling herself Peyton, and she makes such a good impression on Claire, she's hired immediately, and it looks like she's already fixated on Claire's new baby. Claire introduces Peyton to Solomon, who accidentally gets some dirt on her sleeve. Anyone can have an accident. That sounds ominous. Anyway, Claire invites Peyton to have dinner with them tonight. I'm in charge of the salad dressing. I'm in charge of the salad dressing. Fuck off. You little whore. At dinner, Claire drops an earring on the floor. Peyton picks it up and pretends she found it in the baby's mouth. So now she looks like a hero. The next day, Peyton moves in and she's bought Claire some wind chimes. You know, those things that people hang outside their house that make that horrible noise. Yep. That night, Peyton sets her alarm for 3 a.m. so she can go upstairs and breastfeed Claire's baby. The next night, Michael and Claire are going out to dinner with their friends Marty and Marlene, so Peyton can let Emma watch horror films and start turning her against her mum. Emma lets slip that Marlene was Michael's girlfriend before he married Claire. Is that right? Emma also tells Peyton that there's a boy at school called Ross who's been mean to her. When Emma goes to bed, Peyton breastfeeds the baby again. The next day, Peyton takes Emma to the park, and Emma points out Ross, the kid who's been mean to her. Leave Emma alone. If you don't, I'm gonna rip your fucking head off. Good work. The next day, Michael needs to FedEx some proposal to someone for work. Claire offers to do it, because Michael's running late. He's like, make sure you do, because it has to be sent today. Later, Peyton tells Claire about her late husband. He was murdered. They never caught who did it. But I firmly believe what goes around comes around. Okay. I'm not sure why Peyton is blaming anyone else for her husband's death. Surely she'd be more pissed off at her husband for molesting his patients, but apparently not. Anyway, Peyton's taken Michael's proposal from Claire's bag and ripped it up. So when she goes to FedEx, she can't find it and has an asthma attack. When Claire tells Michael what's happened, he's pretty pissed off. The next day, Peyton goes to see Michael at work and suggests throwing Claire a surprise party for her birthday. Oh, that's a good idea. Do you think Marlene would want to help out? She'll take over. Later that day, Solomon catches Peyton breastfeeding the baby, and Peyton knows she's been seen. Are you a retard? No. Did you like looking at me? Don't fuck with me, retard. That word is offensive.
Not finished there, Peyton tells Claire that she thinks Solomon may be interfering with Emma and shoves a pair of Emma's pants in his cart for Claire to find. So Solomon is sacked and sent back to the Better Day Society. Solomon was Emma's best friend and Emma is angry with her mum for firing him. So Peyton's plan is working. I wanted to help Solomon but I was afraid she'd try to send me away too. The next day Marlene comes over to bring some plants round for Claire's greenhouse. While Peyton helps take the plants out of the car, she steals Marlene's lighter. What is that annoying noise? Yep, those are the wind chimes I mentioned earlier. I wonder if they'll be important later. Claire asks Marlene if she wants to come over later, but she says she can't because she's working. What she's actually doing is meeting with Michael to discuss the guest list for Claire's surprise party. That night, Michael hears something downstairs, and when he goes to check what it is, he sees Peyton bent over putting ice cubes back in the freezer. Although we don't see Michael knocking one out in the bathroom before going to bed, it's certainly implied. The next day, when Claire goes to take Michael's stuff to the dry cleaners, the guy working there finds Marlene's lighter in his coat pocket. Your husband's got a habit he's keeping from you. Claire thinks that's proof that Michael and Marlene are having an affair, so she has an asthma attack. Back at home. Claire? Honey, what's the matter? How could you do this? What are you talking about? You've been lying to me? Honey, just calm down. Don't tell me to calm down, you son of a bitch! You've been fucking Marlene! All right, Claire, that's enough! There are people in there. Yep, all the guests for a surprise party. Surprise! <laughs> Marlene's pretty fucked off about what she's just heard, so she leaves. Later, Claire suggests going away for a while, just the family, without Peyton. But Peyton hears this conversation over the baby monitor, so that night she sets her alarm again. This time, she gets up and tampers with the roof of Claire's new greenhouse. Marlene is a realtor, and she gets a new house to sell, Dr. Mott's place. She notices some wind chimes in the photo and goes to the library to investigate. There, she finds out that Peyton is Dr. Mott's widow. Marlene tries to call Claire, but she's out, so she goes round to her house and tells Peyton she knows who she is. Is. Where's Claire? She's in the greenhouse. So Marlene storms into the greenhouse. Claire. So Marlene's dead. Peyton celebrates by emptying all Claire's inhalers, then takes the baby for a walk. When Claire gets back, she finds Marlene's dead body and has an asthma attack. But oh no, all her inhalers are empty, so she collapses. Luckily, the paramedics have arrived, so she's not dead. While Claire's in the hospital, Peyton tries to shag Michael, but he doesn't go for it. What an idiot. At an unspecified time later, when Michael and Emma go to pick Claire up from the hospital, Solomon is following them home. Solomon knows Peyton's up to no good, and he's been keeping an eye on the family, even though they sacked him. Claire starts wondering what Marlene was trying to call her about the day she died, so she goes to Marlene's office and asks what she was doing that day. She's told that she was looking at pictures of their new listing, Dr. Mott's house. <laughs> Claire notices the wind chimes in the photo too. She goes to visit the house to investigate and sees a breast pump. I just don't know what it is. She used it to keep her milk up. So now she's worked it out, Claire rushes home. <laughs> Claire's like, you need to leave. I'll just get my baby and we'll be on our way. Excuse me? I meant, I'll just go get my things. Michael's like, no, you need to leave now. We'll send your things. When she leaves, they call the police and arrange to stay at a hotel. Michael hears a noise coming from downstairs, but it's okay, it's just Peyton's clock radio. <laughs> Claire's heard that noise, so she tells Emma to lock herself in her room with the baby and not open the door until she comes back. Downstairs, Claire finds Michael. She's in the house, Claire. I can't move. My legs are broken. Brilliant. He tells her to grab the kids and call the police. Then there's this fight. Peyton tells Emma she's taking her and the baby away with her, and Emma plays along. But when Peyton goes for the baby, Emma locks her in the nursery and hides the baby in a closet. Good. Unfortunately, Peyton's managed to shining her way out of the nursery, and hears the baby crying in the attic. Shit! When she gets up there, she sees Solomon helping Emma escape. You. Give him over. No. You give me my baby or I'll mess your skull in! Peyton! It's my family, Peyton. Claire's fucking useless and ends up on the floor faking an asthma attack. But between Claire and Solomon, they manage to disarm Peyton and push her out the window. No. So Peyton's dead and Solomon's got his old job back. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.